late in the third quarter. Cougars had fallen behind 21-14, trying to push their winning streak to 12. Max Hall gives it to Fui Vakapuna. Fui on you! <laughs> Game tied at 21. Under four minutes to go in the fourth quarter. BYU looking to take the lead. Hall finds Dennis Pitta, who had 10 catches on the day, 148 yards, Mark. Another huge day for the tight end. Look for the tight ends in the red zone. Take advantage of it. BYU did. Huskies down by seven. It's fourth and ten. Last chance. Here's Jake Locker, Lou. Boy, he's just a great competitor. He can't find anybody. He takes off, gets a first down. Tremendous effort. Keeps the drive alive and the hopes alive. Now it's second and 19. 45 ticks to go. Locker keeping the play alive. DeAndre Goodwin needed 19. Got 20. First down, Washington. 31 seconds to go. Second and 10 on the BYU 19. Bad snap of Locker. Makes the most of it. He had 62 yards on the ground. He's inside the five and going for the tie. Now under 10 seconds to go. It's third and goal. Locker for the end zone. Touchdown. Huskies there within one. But did you see the flip into the air by Jake Locker? Excessive celebration. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Take another look. Awful call. Look at this. He just flips it in the emotion. It's the emotion of the moment. Enjoy it, your college kids. A Pac-10 crew officiated this game. They threw the flag. It backed them up 15 yards for the point after touchdown attempt. Locker bummed on the sidelines and not nearly as bummed as he would be when Jan Jorgensen broke through with a Pontiac game-changing nominee and blocked the extra point attempt. 28-27, a devastating loss for the Huskies. In that rivalry, the Gators haven't beaten the Hurricanes since 1985. Six, six meetings since then. Tim Tebow, well, he gets to know Sean Spence in the backfield. Tebow had 107 total yards in the first half. It's only a 7-3 game when the speedster, the freshman, Jeffrey Demps, blocks the punt to safety. Urban special teams give him a 9-3 edge at the half. Third quarter, third and five, Tebow, Demps, and he's going to be stopped by his own feet short of the first down. The turf monster guy. Tebow wants to go for it, but what happens if a player wants to go for it on fourth down, Lou? Well, you what don't you let him go for it. You, you go for it on third down. Fourth down is my decision. I'm going to punt it. On third down and nine, Tebow does go for it. Carl Moore, a spectacular <laughs> grab along the sideline. Officials initially call it incomplete. It was reviewed. You see the elbow get down, Mark? Mm -hmm. Great call by the officiating crew to come back and make sure that that was inbounds. Little option run. Percy Harvin back from the bad heel. 16-3 lead. Florida wins it 26-3. Chris Fowler and the guys witnessed it. East Carolina against West Virginia. Skip Holtz and the Pirates trying for a second straight win against the top 20 team in so-called upset. Now Pat White is scrambling here and going for the first down. Stretches the ball and leaves it in place. Carolina recovers. But Mark, did he should he have been out of bounds here? No, it shouldn't have been out of bounds. This is the proper call. The ball was inbounds before his hand touched out of bounds. And you're saying he lost control. He lost control. Right for the end. What's well, 10-0 East Carolina and White was harassed all day. He did have 97 yards rushing, much of it coming on scrambles. Jeremy Shambliss got him. 53 seconds to go. Patrick Pinkney, Alex Taylor. Oh, just a great throw, great catch. The young man, Alex Taylor, happens to be six feet four. He used every inch of that 6'4 frame to give East Carolina a 17-3 lead. Now, East Carolina, three down linemen. They don't have to bring backers, and they're still getting all kinds of pressure on White. Their defensive coordinator, Greg Hudson, had said trying to stop West Virginia was like trying to herd cats. But they put a big fence around the West Virginia offense. They definitely do. They had Pat White bottled up and confused the entire afternoon. 24 to 3 and add insult to injury. White can't handle the high snap. Loss of 19 on the play. And for the first time since Rodriguez's first year. No Beanie Wells for this one. Don't know if he'll be ready to go next week, but at the very least, it's a precautionary measure. First quarter, Dan Heron stopped for a loss. Terrell Pryor comes in early, tries to give them a little shake on the offense, and nothing doing against fighting Frankie's defense. The Buckeyes are 3-0 on a fourth and one, and Mo Wells tried it, and look at the soldiers getting in there. Buckeyes were down 7-6 at the half. In the third quarter, it gets worse, Mark. Todd Beckman takes his eye off the snap, and Ohio recovers it for a touchdown, Curtis Myers. And right here, if you're taking a shotgun snap as a quarterback, don't look at the blitz when the snap is coming. You keep your eyes focused on the ball and get the ball first. Now, Ohio State had gotten back within 14-12. Uh, They're punting away. And Sean 
McLean is there to recover it after Mark Parson makes a severe tactical error trying to field it. And Ohio State was in business. Brandon Sane plow through the line. Buckeyes up 19-14, but still Ohio U had a chance until another breakdown on special teams, Ray Small. Just a great execution here. Got some good block, got some help there. Maybe a little block in the back, irrelevant, one called. This was a deciding factor in the game. No flag, no foul. Ohio State wins it 26-14. You know, it was disappointing because we really needed to make progress, and we did make progress in the takeaway area, but um, you know, we've got a lot of work to do, and uh, you know, the good news is we're 2-0, and and it's September, and uh, hopefully we can get a lot better. They'll need to be next week against the Trojans. Notre Dame opening its season against San Diego State, a team which lost to Cal Poly last week. Iris missed some opportunities. Robert Hughes coughs it up right on the goal line, and the Aztecs deny the Irish and take over. Jimmy Clawson, well, he hit Deval Kamara right in the chest. You can't blame Jimmy for that when it was picked off. Clawson trying to hit Kamara again, and Bonnie Holmes going to grab it. Jimmy doesn't like throwing interceptions. No, he doesn't. Aztecs now up 13 to 7. Brandon Sullivan's going for the end zone, Mayday. And right here is a very close call. Right as soon as he gets to the goal line, he stripped of the football. I thought he scored, but they reviewed it and he did not. Okay, take a look here. What do you think now? I still think he scored a touchdown. That broke the point. I don't think so. Ball hits right before it crosses the line. I think it's out of there. I think good call by the official. And from there, Notre Dame took over crossing the Golden Tate. But Jimmy likes throwing touchdown balls. He liked it so much he did it again, Lou, to David like, Bryant. This is just a beautiful fade ride. He just throws it with the receivers. The only one has the chance to catch it. Notre Dame escapes 21 to 13. You won't see a better ending than this. Rice and Memphis, buck 21 to go. Rice down by eight. Chase Clement usually passes it, takes off and scores. Now Rice at one point had been down 35 to 20. And they're coming roaring back, 33-35. Clement needs the two-point conversion. He got it. James Casey, buck 15 to go. Memphis, though, with an opportunity. They've moved into Rice territory inside the 40. Oh, no! Pontiac game-changing nominee, Chris Jammer, hit six as the clock winds down for 10 seconds to go. And Rice with 22 straight points at the end team ranked in the ACC. It's Wake Forest. Chris Paul, the former Wake basketball star, showing off his Olympic gold medal as the Demon Deacons football variety took on Ole Miss. Uh, can Jevin Steed keep the play alive, Mayday? He definitely can. And what he does, he makes something out of nothing. He gets the ball out to the flat to Dexter McCluster, and he takes it in for the score. 21-20. Same score. Wake Forest at the Ole Miss 12. Brandon Pendergrass, Lou. Tremendous blocking at the point of attack as well as on the linebacker. Chris Paul pleased with his Football compatriots, just over a minute to go. Last chance for Ole Miss. So fourth and two. Uh, can Steve keep the play alive? He definitely can. Look at this. Back and forth, fourth and back. Completes the ball in the end zone for a score for Ole Miss. 20 at 31, 253 yards. You don't coach that. And Houston Nuts glad that he can uh, benefit from it, though. Snead threw four touchdown passes. Rebels had a one-point lead. Under a minute to go. Now Skinner trying to save his team, and he finds D.J. Bolden. 22 yards, first down. Bolden 11 catches, a buck 23. 24 seconds to go. Skinner, Josh Adams, they call interference on Marche Green. Lou, what do you think? That well, looks very disputable looking here. It doesn't seem to be that much contact. He's playing the ball. But I can't see it all the way from the start of the play, so I can't pass judgment. Sam Swank would pass the final judgment on Ole Miss when he knocks through a 41-yard field goal, one of the top kickers in America. Boy, Ole Miss put up a good five, $100,000 to come to Happy Valley and play with TV revenue. The Beavers stood to make over one million bucks. Somebody ought to ask for a refund. Ooh. Daryl Clark to Mickey Shuler. This is a great catch by Shuler. Runs in the family. It does. His dad was a fine tight end as well. Penn State up 14 to nothing. It would continue to get uglier and uglier. Oregon State uh, perhaps looking for the plane back to Corvallis as Evan Royster scores. He had 141 yards, three touchdowns to Utah. Looking for his first victory as Wolverines head coach. Stephen Three, that's straight out of the Mountaineer playbook. This is a heck of a job by Three. And for the offensive line of the offense to sell that play going right, he takes it left. It's 10-6 in the fourth quarter. Miami's Daniel Rodeball. Oh, he had Chris Givens. That might have been a touchdown. Missed an opportunity, but Brandon Miner going to put it away for the Wolverines. Michigan wins it 16-6 over the Red Hawks from the back.
Cincinnati and Oklahoma. Sam Bradford led the nation in passing efficiency last year. Very efficient, already up 7 nothing. finds Jermaine Gresham. Go to the tight end in the red zone every time. You'll score points. Oklahoma did. Second and two at the Bearcats, 16. Lou Bradford, Joaquin Iglesias. Uh, just a great throw, great touch. What a tremendous year he had last year, and he's even doing better this year. What a tremendous day Cincinnati's Marty Gilliard had. Gilliard, a 97-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. He set a Cincinnati record with 365 all-purpose yards in Cincinnati. Right in it at 28-20, but they couldn't stop this potent Sooner offense. Bradford to Gresham again. Bradford, a career-high 395 yards passing and five touchdowns into nothing. Did I mention South Florida? Mm -hmm. Ending their quote-unquote rivalry, depending on who you ask, against UCF, University of Central Florida. South Florida was up 24-10, under four minutes to go, and Matt Grothy picked off by Bruce. Bruce Miller, and suddenly the Golden Knights have a chance. Michael Greco, Corey Ravazinski. It's a seven-point game on the ensuing drive. South Florida's forced to punt, and Joe Burnett is a dangerous punt returner. A nice job right here by this time, getting to the wall and just running through tacklers. Returns the ball 34 yards for UCF. A South Florida outgained UCF by nearly, not quite, but nearly 300 yards, but still with under two minutes to go. Greco had a chance, and he also had Rocky Ross. Touchdown UCF, and they were rocking at Bright House Network Stadium because last year, 64 to 12, South Florida rubbed it in. Now South Florida with a chance to win, and they do not. We're going to overtime after Delbert Alvarado missed the field goal. First possession, third and ten. Broken. A great protection, makes a tremendous throw, great catch. But the protection enabled that play to happen. Taurus Johnson caught it 31-24, fourth and six. Last chance for the Golden Knights, and Greco is stopped just short. You know what made that worse? They got a false start penalty when it was fourth and one. Oh. And it turned it into fourth and six, and they missed it by that much. Oh. Frustration for old winner, 32 yards I rushing. Don't like those at, at least his fashion sense. You, you yes. question his fashion sense. Yes. UNLV and Utah. Remember, this is a little bit of a grudge match game. Last year, Mike Sanford said the youth were afraid to tackle Frank Summers, and apparently Sanford's team, UNLV, was unable to tackle Brian Johnson, who went 56 yards. Tie the score at seven. Fourth quarter, 35-14. Well, he's checking his lead for the next play. Johnson is lined up out there at receiver and running back Matt Asiata. Asiata, Jeremy Brooks. It's not like he did anything. He just stood there. Well, he wanted to show that he was hiding over uh -huh. there. He would think run then if it's going to the quarterback. Or Stanford and Arizona State, Dennis Erickson's team. Opening Pac-10 play. Harbaugh squad already has a victory over Oregon State. Rudy Carpenter. Looking for Michael Jones and gave the Sun Devils a 13-6 lead. Now Carpenter, a much better job protecting him in the opener. He avoids a little pressure, steps up in the pocket, something they wanted him to do better. Terry Taylor goes in for the score in that Sun Devil passing attack, hitting high gear for Erickson. And in the desert, Stanford had not been competitive in their last couple of trips, the last couple of games against Arizona State. They lost 79 to 6. Arizona State rolling up a pretty good size number this time around as well. Colt McCoy and Texas going to El Paso for the first time. For the last time they went, UTEP was called College of Mines. It's a 7 6 game, snaps offline and partially blocked by Texas on the punt, and the Longhorns would go on to score on the ensuing possession. On the UTEP sideline, they keep an eye on Greg Hyatt. UTEP's warming up another long snapper. Jeff Amato's long snap would drill Hyatt, and well, that didn't work out so well for him. They go over and try to smooth things over. McCoy to Blaine Irby in Texas built himself a great big lead. And Texas going in to El Paso, where a lot of fans have bought season tickets to Miners game just to make sure they could get in to see that one. Rather pedestrian game for Graham Harrell, Michael Crabtree and company, but they do get the win against Nevada on a count of 35 to 19.